Hey everyone, this is David Brown with the Migration Update for April 7th, 2024 from the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. If you are looking for information about tomorrow's total solar eclipse, that'll come at the end of the video, so stay tuned. Kim and I started out the day at the Braddock Bay East Spit with a couple of local friends and also our friend Joe, who's up from Delaware with his wife for the solar eclipse. It was a beautiful sunny morning and it was pretty birdy. Here we have a raptor perched in a tree. This is a small dark falcon. This is a merlin. As we walked out to the tip of the east spit, I had my first brown creeper of the season. And this duck gave us a nice look. We see a brown head with a white stripe up the neck and a long skinny tail. This is a male northern pintail. Here's a bird that flew overhead. It's bright yellow underneath with a black bib, and we see white outer tail feathers. This is an eastern meadowlark. And here's probably our most stunning duck that gave us a close pass in perfect light. This is a male wood duck. And we had a couple of these this morning. This is a type of flycatcher. We see it's kind of a dirty gray color overall with a black bill. This is an eastern phoebe, and when they perch, they like to flick their tail. There were some flocks of blackbirds migrating high overhead, including quite a few rusty blackbirds. You can see the pale eye in this photo. From the East Spit this morning, we had 51 species. We went over to Braddock Bay Park to start the hawk watch around 9 a.m., and the skies remained blue the entire day, just a few tiny clouds off on the horizon, but a really beautiful sunny day. The winds were light to start the day and then settled into a light northeasterly lake breeze, but we ended up with a pretty big turkey vulture flight again and a good number of other raptors mixed in as well. Since turkey vultures made up the bulk of the flight, I'll start off with a photo of one. Turkey vultures are two-toned underneath with small red heads. Here's an example of a group of turkey vultures soaring on a thermal. Here we have a small white goose flying with two Canada geese. And we were struck by how small the goose was, and it seems to have a tiny bill, which would lead us more towards the rarer Ross's goose rather than the larger and more common snow goose. A lot of times when we see Ross's geese, they're mixed into a flock of snow geese, so you have that direct comparison with the size and the size and shape of the bill. But here we had it against Canada geese, so it's a little less of a direct comparison. And I think the jury is still out on this one. Some people were leaning towards Ross's goose. Other people suggested hybrid. And we're going to give it a little bit of time, let some other people take a look at the photos and see if a consensus emerges. Here we have a small raptor with pointed wings. It's overall light underneath. So this is a small light-colored falcon. This is an American kestrel. Here's a turkey vulture that gave us a nice low pass directly overhead. And the turkey vultures gave a lot of really nice looks today as the flight line shifted a little bit to the sides and directly overhead we had a lot of low groups passing. Amazing views, just uh, quite a spectacle to take in. I think turkey vultures can be a little bit underappreciated, but when you have them flying by in the thousands per day, it's pretty spectacular. Here we have a hawk, and just based off of the shape, we should be thinking the Buteo genus. We see dark patagial bars in the shoulder area. And we see a dark belly band, so we know that this is a red-tailed hawk. We also see a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail, so we know that this is an adult. Here's another group of turkey vultures circling on a thermal. And anytime you see them circling like this, what they're doing is they're in an area of rising hot air, and they're using that as lift to gain altitude. They'll circle to gain altitude, and then when they glide, they make forward progress, but they lose altitude. And when they get too low, then they'll catch another thermal and soar up on it. So they can basically stay up all day using very little energy because they never really have to flap. They just soar up and then glide to make forward progress. Here's another adult red-tailed hawk, and several of them that we saw today were more heavily marked, like this one. Here we have a hawk shaped like a flying cross, so we should be thinking excipiter. We see orange barring underneath, so we know it's an adult, either Cooper's hawk or sharp-shinned hawk. We see that this bird has a bit of a rounded tail tip because the outer tail feathers are slightly shorter, has a large head, just big and lanky overall. This is an adult Cooper's hawk. Here we have a hawk, and the first thing we should decide is, is this a buteo or an excipiter? Because the tail does look fairly long, and it's got those long straight wings, but this is actually a buteo that just happens to have a longer tail. Um, if we look at some of the field marks, we see that it doesn't have those dark patagial bars like we see on red tails, but it does have some markings there, just some lines. 
And if we look, it doesn't have the belly band that red tails show because the streaking on this bird starts all the way up on the upper breast. We don't have a clean upper breast and then that dark belly band. So this is not a red tailed hawk. Another hint we can look at is near the wingtips. We see translucent crescents, and that's perhaps one of the best field marks for identifying this species. This is a juvenile red shouldered hawk. Here we have a large dark raptor with a lot of splotchy white underneath and a large head, an uneven trailing edge to the wing because there's multiple ages of feathers. This is an immature bald eagle, probably coming up on two years old. Here we have two gulls and someone looked up and said, hey, there's a white winged gull flying overhead. And by that point they were flying away from us. So I only got photos from approximately this angle. I never really got photos that show the bill better. But if we look on the right hand bird, we see kind of a two toned underwing. And as I watched it in the scope, I could see the top side of the bird and it was fairly dark. So we know that this is a black backed gall and great black back gall is the largest gall species in the world. And this, this gall next to it is bigger than it. So I think we can roll out great black backed gall and identify this right bird as a lesser black backed gall. Now the bird on the left with those completely white wingtips would be either an Iceland gall or a Glaucus gall. And at first we were just calling it an Iceland gall, but as I was going through my photos tonight, I was looking and Iceland gall should only be slightly larger than lesser black backed gall, maybe one inch bigger in wingspan. And this bird on the left is significantly larger than the lesser black backed gall. So I'm thinking this bird on the left may actually be a Glaucus gall. So hopefully that reasoning makes sense. I'm going to show the photo to a few more people and see what they think, but I think this may be a new species for the season for us with Glaucus gall. Here we have a hawk with a long tail and long wings with rounded wingtips, so we should be thinking excipiter. Now if we look at this bird, we see a very squared off tip to the tail, somewhat small head. This is a sharp shinned hawk, and we see orange barring underneath indicating that this is an adult sharp shinned hawk. Ooh, this is a nice looking one. What do we see on this bird? Very dark patagial bars and a big thick black belly band. And a dark trailing edge to the wings and a red tail indicate that this is an adult red-tailed hawk. And based on how heavily marked this one is with those dark patagial bars, huge belly band, and dark throat, I think it's safe to say that this one is a northern red-tailed hawk, or the Abietta cola subspecies. Here we have a vulture with a two-toned appearance to the underside, a small head, and a very, very small tail. So is this a black vulture? Well, no. Looking at this two-toned plumage and the red head, we know this is a turkey vulture, but it happens to be missing most or all of its tail. And here we have a flying water bird with very pointed wings. We see a black cap and a thick orange-red bill. This is the largest species of tern in the world. This is a Caspian tern, and we had a few of them today. They're finally starting to show up. This wasn't the first day that we had them, but this was the first day that we were really seeing multiple of them. And taking a look at the eBird checklist from the Hawkwatch, we had around 70 species today. I had a couple new species for the season today, including brown creeper. If that gall does turn out to be a glaucus gall, that would be a new one. There was a flyover savanna sparrow. And if that goose turns out to be a Ross's goose, that would also be a new species for the season. Taking a look at the hawk count report for our migrant raptor totals, today we had 1,912 turkey vultures, two osprey, five bald eagles, four northern harriers, seven sharp-shinned hawks, 11 cooper's hawks. For beautios, we had 11 red shoulders and 42 red tails. And the only falcons of the day were two American kestrels for a total of 1,996 migrating raptors. That brings the April total to 6,521 and the season total to 14,641. For tomorrow, it's looking like cloudy skies with a high in the upper 50s. Winds are starting southeast and shifting around to northeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. We've had a lot of turkey vultures the last few days, and assuming there's enough lift for them to continue migrating, I think we could end up with a decent number again tomorrow, and hopefully other species as well. Now that we're into April, things are really starting to pick up, so even when the weather is less than optimal, we can still get a decent number of migrants.
And this may be a good time to address the tomorrow. There is a total solar eclipse that the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch is part of the path of totality. And I haven't really talked about it much in my videos so far, just because I think that Braddock Bay Park is going to be a very popular spot. I think the park's going to get very crowded and there will be a lot of people out at the Hawk Watch platform and in the surrounding grassy areas. Parking could be an issue. Um, obviously, there's those couple parking spots across from the Hawk Watch and then the larger parking lots over near the buildings. And beyond that, I think people will just park in the grass. So there is some amount of parking, but I'm just worried that the park is really going to get filled. Although maybe some of my worry was a bit unfounded because over the past few days, unfortunately, the weather forecast is becoming less optimal for seeing the eclipse. Now they're calling for more cloud cover. Um, I guess we'll just have to find out when we get out tomorrow what the weather's looking like. Right now outside, it's perfectly clear. You can see all the stars and constellations. Um, today's weather would have been perfect for the eclipse, but unfortunately, there's going to be some clouds moving in ahead of a front, um, maybe even a chance of rain at some points tomorrow. So we're going to be out at the Hawk Watch. I think there's still going to be a decent crowd out there, and we're going to have a good time no matter what. There's going to be southerly winds overnight. Uh, the bird radar is already lit up, so I think there will be a decent morning songbird flight and hopefully a decent raptor flight as well. So we'll make the best of it no matter what the weather ends up being. I haven't heard anything specific about the park. Um, I don't know that the town is doing anything different from a normal day in the park. Obviously, we do have the one porta potty for the Hawk Watch. I don't know if there's going to be any other bathrooms available. Uh, I just haven't heard anything about um, the town acting any differently. So I would just prepare um, for things to be as normal. As far as I know, all of the normal parking is going to be available. There's at least that one porta potty. Feel free to come out and visit us, and uh, we'll make the best of it. Expect a big crowd. And if you're traveling, be safe and just make the best of it. For Tuesday, it's looking like a mix of sun and clouds with a high in the mid 60s. Winds east southeast at 5 to 10 miles per hour. I would expect moderate migration. And for Wednesday, a few showers early and then mostly cloudy with a high around 60 and light westerly winds. Looks a little bit gloomier that day, maybe only light to moderate migration. All right, well, today ended up being a great day of birding from getting out early and birding the east spit with some friends and then having beautiful weather at the Hawk Watch all day while we had a really spectacular low turkey vulture flight. Once again, tomorrow is the total solar eclipse. There's going to be a lot of traffic on the road, especially as the weather forecast is changing. It's looking less favorable for the Rochester area. There may be a lot of people on the road trying to get to areas that do have clear skies. So if you're going to be traveling, give yourself extra time. Make sure you have a full tank of gas and food and water and a little bit of patience. It's going to take a while to get wherever you're going. Everyone drive safely and have a really good time watching the total solar eclipse. I saw one down in Tennessee in 2017, and it's a truly spectacular sight. So hope everyone has a good opportunity to view the eclipse safely tomorrow. And I hope to see you soon out at the Braddock Bay Hawk Watch. From LEGO Birds, this is David Brown. Thanks for watching.